I'm Bob and Oster Hout. Um, over 36 years of counseling, uh, I worked with a lot of people who were recovering from a lot of different uh, problems and difficulties, and, and uh, I've noticed that there are a number of common features, actually three common features to the recovery process that, that seem to cross a whole range of, of uh, issues and difficulties, whether someone's recovering from illness or, or surgery or an injury, or they're recovering from substance abuse or loss or a high stress time or post-traumatic stress disorder or caregiver stress. Uh, uh, caregiver stress is something that, that requires a time of recovery and it often has a loss connected with it, so it's a, it's a dual uh, process there. And if you follow some basic principles, uh, you can recover in a healthy way. And if you don't follow those principles, there tends to be obstacles and difficulties and you can extend the recovery or, or even block it. Uh, the most important principle is the principle of balance. Uh, balance, first of all, involves getting rid of tension that has built up. And tension often builds up in, in response to pain or stress or struggle and so forth, physical tension in our body. And uh, you can watch the videos on diaphragmatic breathing and clearing your mind and, and meditation. And those provide tools that, that uh, describe how to get rid of tension. And the video on grounding will help you identify patterns of tension in your body and learning how to, to neutralize those and to to speed the recovery process because it, it requires more than rest, um, but it does require rest. Uh, if you want to recover without rest, you're kidding yourself, okay? Your body and mind and emotions have been through a difficult, challenging period and every species requires time for recovery when there's been some time of struggle and difficulty. That's just part of our nature. Uh, so if you pay attention to the recovery and pay close attention to balance. So uh, often uh, rest is most important in the beginning stages of recovery and it's important as you go on to have a balance between rest and activity. If you sleep all day uh, for a few days after a, a major difficulty, uh, that's not a problem. If you sleep all day for three months, then you're probably not getting any better, okay? So there needs to be a balance between rest and activity. Uh, that balance will lean more towards rest earlier, uh, more of an equal, um, not so much in terms of time, but in terms of, of matching your energy and your needs uh, as time goes on through the recovery process. Uh, it's also important to maintain balance in terms of, of eating regularly and, and having a routine so that, uh, uh, for example, uh, even if you don't have to go anywhere, you get up and get dressed and, and clean up uh, and do something productive each day, even if it's something very small and, and minor, uh, that gives you a different mindset and, and keeps you from building and getting in tension and, and uh, getting stuck in your, in your thinking. Um, it's important to, to be aware of your limits. That's an important part of the principle of balance. And it's easy to get ahead of yourself in a recovery process. You start to feel a little bit better or you get frustrated uh, that things aren't, aren't going as quickly as you might like them. And you can avoid that frustration uh, with the next principle, which is the principle of acceptance. Uh, and you need to accept the limitations. If you accept the limitations and recognize that's part of the recovery process and, and you're heading in a healthy direction and that's a good thing, and don't let your mind run off to places what you think you should be doing, which is kind of a silly thing, uh, but what am I capable of doing without harming myself or delaying the recovery? And what is absolutely important to do, asking questions there, leads to the third principle of, of uh, healthy recovery, which is to clarify. So I'm gonna step back to uh, accept because there's, there's uh, more that needs to be said about that uh, because recovery always involves pain and loss, um, whatever it is that you're recovering from. Uh, this is particularly true in substance abuse. Uh, uh, you have to go through a painful time. Uh, caregiver stress comes to mind, especially when there's been a loss connected with it. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, an emptiness and, a, and a, a loneliness when we lost someone that we've cared for who's close to us. Um, and, and that pain is natural. As a matter of fact, it's, it's if there were no love in that relationship, in the example of someone caring for a loved one who they lose, uh, then there would be no pain. So the pain uh, is an indication of the level of love that was there. So it's a very natural and human thing. It's a part of who we are. 
But there's a tendency um, somehow that uh, this culture has gotten into that we should somehow avoid pain or resist pain. And all that does is build tension which works against us and undermines the recovery process. So it's very important to accept that pain. And sometimes it's physical pain. Uh, and actually trying to fight physical pain has the opposite effect because tension has been shown to actually increase pain. So uh, physical muscle tension increases pain. Uh, so the idea is to, is to to use the diaphragmatic breathing as is explained in, in that video and to, and to clear your mind and to just feel the pain for what it is and you'll know that it's always temporary, especially emotional pain. Uh, I've never seen emotional pain last more than a couple of minutes in just about all cases per episode. It tends to come in waves um, and that'll be a very uncomfortable wave whether it's post-traumatic stress or dealing with a loss um, it kind of hits you and you stop and you breathe and you put your feet down, you stay grounded and it's very uncomfortable but then it passes. And after you've gone through that a few times and you recognize that it passes and you recognize that you then have more energy after it passes, maybe after you've taken a nap or so, but over time that you get more energy as you let go of that emotional tension, you recognize that that's an important part of recovering uh, and, and it becomes easier not to fight that. But there's a tendency to want to turn away from the pain. Um, and particularly in substance abuse, that creates a, a problem because uh, you can, you know, abuse the substance again and the pain disappears for a while. Uh, so it's a trap. The short-term comfort and ease from the pain, or we think it is, uh, is undermines our long-term recovery. So that brings me back to the principle of clarifying, where it's very important to, to maintain a long-term perspective, that, that you want to make it through the entire recovery process. You want it to, to go through to, to regain all of the health that you're capable of. Um, and that involves uh, paying attention to what you do and how that affects that long-term recovery process. And substance, someone who has a problem with substance abuse who, who gets drunk or gets high um, sets that back a bit. It doesn't take it all the way back necessarily to, to the first place unless they continue it, but it, it sets it back and it delays it and it takes it in a different direction. And, and the key is to make long-term decisions. So if you clarify the short-term versus the long-term, yeah, I would feel better not to have this pain for a moment, but the pain is natural and I need to go through it in order to fully recover, it helps us to, to continue on that process. It's helpful to clarify what direction we're heading in. Are we, are we moving toward recovery or are we moving away from it? And if we're tensing up or running away from the pain or resisting it, we're moving away from it. If we're overdoing and pushing ourselves, yeah, we may think we're accomplishing something in the short term, but long term we're pulling back away from the recovery process. So clarifying and asking those kinds of questions helps you to keep on a road that leads to ultimate recovery. Uh, it's also important to clarify priorities, what's really important. And most of the time, if there's been any kind of a serious setback, the recovery is what's more important. I mean, if the house is on fire, yeah, you get out of the house you know, for short-term safety. Uh, but um, there are a few things that are more important over the long term than that recovery because that diminishes your capacity to, to be yourself and to live your life as it needs to be lived. Uh, so being clear about the recovery is a priority and that's a big job and that's the main thing to do and it often lasts many months depending on, on the situation and the circumstances and keeping that as a priority and being aware of the direction allows you to recover as, as fully as, as possible. Uh, and then the other part to clarify is is uh, to recognize the limitations and part of balance remember is staying within the limitations but we need to clarify okay how can I adapt to those limitations um, uh, what can I do to stay within that so I don't set myself back so I don't build up additional tension so I don't create other problems that then require an additional period of recovery so how can I adjust and adapt and that's that's a learning process but if we keep that thought and that question in mind uh, that helps us to to continue in that in that way and keep moving toward health so there's three basic principles so you can think of them as ABC but we always start with balance okay balance takes away the tension allows the recovery to to move forward acceptance 
uh, it means that you're not resisting what's happening, you're accepting what's happening, you're accepting what's happened, you accept your mistakes, you accept the loss um, without fighting it, without complaining about it, without dramatizing it, simply letting it be what it is as a starting point and moving on from there. And then clarifying is trying to see a larger picture more clearly, asking questions about how to adapt to limitations, about short-term versus long-term kinds of thinking, about what the priorities are, and asking, am I heading in a healthy direction here? Is this going to interfere with those directions? All those kinds of questions help you to move toward a healthy recovery. Good luck with that. Thank you.